Manderville time! Delon is ready to embark on his latest investigation. Ah, oh, Ranger, you're just in time to assist with my latest fact-finding expedition. A recent foray into Charlie and revealed that Pew Pew's friend was in the company of a Hanish alchemist, yes? As such, I was inspired to do some preliminary legwork here in Thavnair. I contacted my usual sources for local sightings of alien phenomena, but alas, they had none to share. I have thus switched tactics and decided to track down this alchemist fellow instead. Surely someone will have heard the tale of an apothecary bold enough to set shop in, on a Garlean battlefield. The inspector and the others have been pursuing a similar line of inquiry, yet have found no leads here in the city or at the great work. I believe they moved their investigation to Yidmid, so I suggest we hurry over and join them. I cannot have that little blue man muddling the waters when we're so close to grasping his master plan! You're a madman. That's what you are. You are a madman! Alright. Well, anyway, we'll just uh, hit a little ether right here. And we'll go out to Thabnair. Incoming! Yes. Oh, I'm just a little ways from the... Okay. Hello, Hildebrand. Where is Brandy? Oh, wait. Wait, wait. No, Brandy's right there. I was like, wait. I see the two of you are eager as ever to observe my inspector genius at work. Ah, the long-term fans are often the most ardent. As a matter of fact, we were just about to continue our investigation into the alchemists. We know to have been traveling with Master Pupio's comrade. Uh, I mean, that is to say, I am merely following the inspectors. Uh, wait. You need to be so modest, my dear Inspector Brandy Hild. It is wrong of me to compart myself as an equal to you in any respect, for I am but a copy and a flawed one at that. Stuff and nonsense, clone or not, self deprecation is unbecoming in a Manderville man. Exactly! The things you can do are amazing! Oh, I don't know about that. Tis you who saved Ryanteer from certain doom, was it not? While not quite as Alcaris is mine, your rapid reasoning is nevertheless quite effective. Tis kind of you to accept me, rough to edges and all. I only hope my meager contributions are of some small assistance. Too modest by half. I'd say his mental faculties are far surpassed those of the original. <laughs> Holy hell. Uh, that's enough shin wagon among ourselves, I think. Let us spread out and learn what the locals know of this adventurous apothecary. The fucking Lala! Someone punt the potato. Pump a pump, pump a potato. 
I mean, I literally thought of making a Lala just for the fact that I call it Chiwa Chihuahua. Chi Chihuahua Chihuahua. That's what it was. Yes, I know of the one whom you speak. A fellow fisherman told me of a friend of his, uh, uh, his an apothecary, who set off for war-torn Gollimol to sell his medicines. A reckless fool, if you ask me. I've no interest in the affairs of such men, but you do, I take it. If so, I suggest you head to... <sighs> and here's a tale for yourself. Look for a red-haired lad there gathering shellfish. Do I know any apothecaries in Razat Hand? Of course, more than I can count. I've not heard tell of anyone peddling such good in the heart of the Empire, though. Seems like a terrible idea to me, with the civil war raging and the world almost ending. The situation's improved in recent days, but even so, the Radiant Host still has to provide security for cargo shipments. A lone merchant trading there alone? Impossible. Nothing is impossible, as Bana would say. Wait, no, that's not a door. Well, it is a door. It's just not a door that you can enter. It is locked. Door is the true in-game boss for every game. Hmm, I know of many merchants who travel abroad to ply their wares, but none who have business in Garlemald. You'd have to be mad or desperate indeed to consider setting up a shop in that troubled land. I mean, word is we've signed some kind of trade agreement with the Garleans, but it's still not the kind of place where one simply wanders in and opens a street stall. Right, let's go. I got my little Hades following me. I absolutely adore it. And I literally spent all my guild savings on it. <laughs> because I didn't get it in the uh, maps, so uh, this is this buying it, I had to. I, I couldn't be without it. I need to get hit next. Farewell, Hornish person. Ah, right here. I hope your questioning has borne fresher fruit than mine. Oh ho, a good friend of the alchemist in question, you say. Then let us gather the troops and pay a visit to this uh, felicious fisherman. That Lala. The story of my apothecary friend? Oh, you must mean, uh, Balarafsa. Well, I was near enough to calling it a day anyway, so here's what I can tell you. Bahasaraf comes from a very poor family, and growing up never had much in the way of money or possessions. I suppose those experiences are what led to his lifelong obsession with gaining wealth. After trying his hand at a succession of trades, he decided alchemy would earn him the most skill. But his stock never sold as well as he hoped. So when he heard of the internal strife in Garlemald, he saw it as a golden opportunity. Certainly in the middle of a war was the best place to sell medicines. Heh, <laughs> more like the best place for near-death experiences. He soon gave up on his Garlemald adventure but while one would have the while one would have expected him to return laminating his ill fortune, Bahasarasov uh, was practically euphoric when I saw him again. A god's given blessing he found in the snowfields had given him. Much cause to celebrate. He said he'd learned how to create gold. I must admit, I laughed at first. But then he showed me a gleaming mountain of the stuff, enough to proclaim himself a merchant prince. He even changed his name to Von Hootie, a word which means to bind the bounty of the divine. A name I have heard. He's the rising star in the markets, is he not? The one who's snapping up commercial ventures left and right? Yes, 
Von Hootie has a, uh, certainly made his ambitions known here in Thavnir, especially when he attempted to purchase the entire port of Yid Yildemad. The Dockmasters declined to sell, of course, but when it comes to buying historic landmarks, the bottomless purse can open surprising doors. Last I heard, he's converted the Gilded Arya into a private abode and has been filling it with every rare treasure his gold can secure. He pays out practic particularly large sum for artworks depicting the goddess Asura. I remember him being fervent. Um, I remember him being a fervent worshiper of hers, even as a child. I've encountered much uh, Man Nasa and Mirgara lore in Razatan, yet I recall no mention of this Asura. Well, that's hardly surprising as a deity of war. She's not well loved by the common folk. Basaraf's is different, though. He sees life as a constant battle to amass wealth, and it is to Azura whom he pays for victory. And damn me if she didn't listen. That one poor boy became merchant royalty. A man far too rich and important now to afford more than a fleeting moment for a simple fisherman, even those who were once dear friends. <clears throat> if you'll excuse me, I must leave, I really must leave it at that. These clams won't sell themselves, you know. How about that, eh? Our sought after apothecary and the upstart merchant prince are one and the same. Might we assume the blessing he stumbled upon in Garlemald was a certain alien craft and its occupant? That's what I'm thinking. Sorry to intrude, but aren't you the hero who helped us when folk were turning into beasts? Well, some nasty looking creature just showed up outside town. One of our guards went to confront it, but I don't like her odds against that thing. This sounds like a case for Inspector Hildebrand. Come friends, let us investigate forthwith. Again, dude. Bigger body, but seriously, I, th I, th I, th I, you destroyed that monster. Mm, about three times now, I think. Yes. I have the situation under control, citizens. This individual bears a strong resemblance to a known fugitive, so I thought it pugilant to investigate. Regrettably, he has who've been less than forthcoming with answers. How many times was you mean to- Oh my god! How many times was we teach you this lesson, old man? Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Lesson? What do you want about? Bah, cease this babbling and get out of my way. Lord Von Hootie's orders are to be- to cause trouble at the port, and I'm running behind schedule. Von Hildy, the month, uh, merchant who tried to buy Yudemad, so he put you up to this? Curses, how did you manage to deduce our dastardly plan? I don't know, maybe because you blurted it out? You just, you blurted it out! <laughs> exactly. Silence, no one who, uh, Learns of our schemes can be suffered to live. Prepare to be squashed, meddlesome worms. Godbert! Yeah! Why are there multiple? Oh, that's what they were cloning. Oh, no. Three more sinister schoolmen? Was this the, uh, the doctor a quadruplet? Nope, I'm a... Uh... Oh yeah, Mama Hildy! Get him. <laughs> They're gonna regret it. The frying pan is the ultimate weapon. <laughs> My mother!
infectious vermin. This will soften you up. Who wants to play a game of soccer or volleyball? Oh, baseball. Let's go. I am glad I got to the honor of holding the frying pan. Bah! A lucky hit. Home run! Let's go. Try it! Oh no! What the fuck? Strike! Uh-oh. Duck! You might want to get rid of that. <laughs> she just walks away. Okay, ready time. Bye! It's fine. He'll be fine. He sounds like a Pokemon! One last pitch. I'm not gonna miss this time. On guard, you! Heavy hitting special! A hitter special. I can't read. But then again, I'm still upset I didn't read all the things before. Get him! Bob! That was my favorite fastball! You're blasting off again! I come to expect father's sudden experiences, but what brings you here, mother? Uh, a proposition from that merchant of Von Hudi, as a matter of fact. I am accompanying your dad as a manager for Manderville and Manderville, and we were just on our way to the bloke's mansion. I've already refused Master Von Ely once before when he tried to buy out our commercial empire. This time, however, the deal concerns offloading a quantity of gold at wholesale prices. It's quite an attractive offer considering fine jewelry is our stock and trade, and we thought to at least listen to his proposal. But if he would purposely command his lackeys to disturb the peace of a public port. We can't do business with a thug like that. Absolutely not. Where did all those lackeys come from in the first place? Is there a hulking weaponized brute manufactory around here somewhere? Pew Pew knows. Pew Pew. As I suspected, my ship's vaporation being is configured to expunge only replicated matter. So you can copy inorganic materials as well. How interesting. Once the matter uh, duplication facility has analyzed an object's mo modular structure, it can generate any number of copies. Yet it cannot create matter from nothing, a requisite uh, supply of ether must be on hand to facilitate the process. Core, you sure do know a lot. What, wait, did she just call him Core? What the heck? Okay, you sure do know a lot about a lot, Inspector Brady Hild. What, what, what's, what's, what's Core referring to? Hey, yo, what? Even alien starships. I'm confused. I feel like I'm missing something. 
Tis no great achievement. As I mentioned, the gaps in my knowledge were patched with data from the Starship's own archives, which include the vessel's full schematics and functions. Assuming I understand this correctly, it's possible that Von Hoody is using the repaired alien craft to replicate piles of and piles of gold. It's fool's gold. Yeah? It'd be fool's gold, yeah? We share the same suspicion, Master Dolan. To my knowledge, no other method exists that can reliably produce precious metals. Of course! It's an obvious conclusion! That being the case, one might further assume that Von Hudi is either threatening or deceiving Master Pew Pew's comrade in order to gain access to the vessel's superior technology. Our course of action is clear. We march right up to this gold spawner's front door and demand the release of his extraterrestrial hostage. <laughs> I, 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 this, I had the music. <laughs> we must confront this malicious merchant at once. If your heart is set on confrontation, then you may as well come with us. Von Hoody's invitation includes a private airship flight to his new estate. Aye, we still need to formally reject his deal anyway, and his pilot will be waiting. 